our next topic is paranasal air sinuses so what are paranasal air sinuses they are the air filled mucosa lined cavities that develop in the cranial and the facial bone so these are the spaces that communicates with the nasal airway the sinus they are named for the bones in which they are located the paranasal sinuses they are maxillary air sinus frontal air sinus ethmoidal air sinus and the sphenoidal air sinus the maxillary sinus it is a pneumatic space that is lodged inside the body of the maxilla and it communicates with the environment by the way of middle meters and the nasal vestibule which sinus is the largest of the all paranasal sinuses it is the maxillary sinus which sinus it is the first to develop yes it's the maxillary sinus so it starts at a shallow groove on the medial surface of maxilla during the during the fourth month of the intrauterine life at what age it reach to the maximum size it reaches to the maximum size around 18 years of the age the maxillary sinus expansion occurs more rapidly until all the permanent teeth they have erupted so these are the age changes in the maxillary sinus at 0 to 3 years it is avoided in appearance in 3 to 4 years it in, there is increase in the width with the facial growth and in 9 to 12 years it assume a pyramidal shape appearance in old age there is resorption of the ridge thinning of the sinus wall in its development the maxillary sinus it is tubular at birth it becomes ovoid in the ch childhood and it it is pyramidal in the adulthood so the maxillary sinus it is pyramidal in shape with the base that is directly medially toward the lateral wall of the nose and the apex it is directed the and the apex is directed laterally in the zygomatic process of the maxilla so it has a base apex and four walls the superior inferior lateral and the anterior wall other name of maxillary sinus it is antrum of hymore what are the function of the maxillary sinus it imparts resonance to the voice increase the surface area and lightens the skull it moistens and warms the inspired air filter the debris from the inspired air there is mucus production and storage it provides thermal insulation to the important organs and can act as accessory olfactory organ the roof of the maxillary antrum the roof it is formed by the floor of the orbit and it is traversed by infra orbital nerves what are the important structures that are present in the roof of the antrum infra orbital canal infra orbital foramen infra orbital nerve and the vessels the floor of the sinus it is formed by the junction of anterior sinus wall and lateral nasal wall so the it lies 1 to 1.2 cm below the nasal floor it is it shows a close relation between the sinus and teeth so there is close relation between the sinus and teeth that facilitate the spread of pathology the anterior wall it is formed by the facial surface of the maxilla important structures are the infra orbital foramen anterior superior alveolar artery middle superior alveolar artery and the canal fossa the posterior wall it is formed by sphenoid maxillary wall important structures are the posterior superior alveolar nerve maxillary artery tergo palatine ganglion and nerve of pterygoid canal the medial wall it is formed by a lateral nasal wall below there is inferior nasal concave behind 
if the palatine bone above is the uncinate process of the ethmoid and the lacrimal bone the important structures are the hiatus semilunaris sinus ostium ethmoidal bulla uncinate process and the infundibulum the opening of the maxillary sinus is known as is known as ostium so where does the maxillary sinus open it open in the middle meters it open in the middle meters at the at the lower part of the hiatus semilunaris it lies above the level of nasal floor now what is the blood supply the arterial blood supply is through the branch of third part of the maxillary artery that is the tergopalatine part the branches are posterior superior alveolar artery infraorbital artery and greater palatine artery the venous supply the venous drainage anteriorly by facial vein and posteriorly by tergoid venous plexus and sphenopalatine vein now the infection from the maxillary sinus can spread to involve the cavernous sinus by any of the drainage veins as the pterygoid plexus they communicates with the cavernous sinus by the emissionary vein what is the nerve supply it is by the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve that is the posterior middle and anterior superior alveolar nerve infraorbital nerve and anterior palatine nerve the lymph drainage is by submandibular lymph nodes deep cervical lymph nodes and retropharyngeal lymph nodes the maxillary sinus it is lined by three layers epithelial layer basal lamina and subepithelial layer the epithelium is pseudo stratified columnar and ciliated epithelium so maxillary sinus the epithelium is pseudo stratified columnar and ciliated so it has a cilia so when the cilia will beat the mucus on the epithelium surface it moves from the sinus interior toward the nasal cavity the radiograph it is the most common supplementary investigation to clinical examination of the sinuses so what radiograph findings we can use for the evaluation first of all the intraoral investigation that we can use is periapical occlusal or lateral occlusal view extra oral we can use is opg waters view submento vertex view pa view other view are ct scan and mri the first is the periapical the border of the maxillary sinus on the periapical radiograph will appear as thin delicate radio opaque line in the absence of disease it appears continuous but on close examination it has small interruption in its smoothness or density the root of the maxillary molar lie very near to the maxillary sinus and they project and they may project into the floor of the sinuses causing causing small elevation or prominence so this one is the occlusal and the lateral occlusion you where you can see the maxillary sinus on panoramic radiography it will provide a ex extensive overview of the sinus floor and its relation with the tooth and the roots which view is used for maxillary sinus it's the water view that is used to look out for the contour of the maxillary sinus the water view it is also known as occipital mental view it can be best it can be used to visualize number of structures in the skull like the maxillary sinus thmoid sinus frontal sinus sphenoid sinus etc in the case of the maxillary sinusitis you will see a radio opacity the maxillary sinus will show radio opacity the mucous membrane will show thickening the air fluid level may be observed if the radiograph is taken in the head up position in case of the polyps the maxillary sinus will show radio opacity so the radio opacity it has a convexity pointing upward in case of malignancy similarly the sinus is radio opaque sometime 
you will see destruction of the walls of sinus and it is diagnostic of the malignancy so what you do is the distance between the anterior lateral wall of the maxilla and coronoid process of the mandible that is myet if it is increased on one side it indicates involvement of infratemporal fossa by the malignancy that is hendosa sign